two, one. Go, hold it here. Okay, everything's tight. We're about a minute to the start. I sit on the traveler bar because I'm reading the breeze, and all of a sudden, I hear, oh my God, he's blind. <laughs> it's not just going for sailboat rides. It's actually competing and raising the level of their experience. Tap. That's your head, Phil. Stand tight, Nancy. There you go. Now bear off five, Inky. Bear off five. There we go. Nice pressure. Wow. Hold steady on course. I started sailing when I was 26, back in 1979. I've been a competitive athlete since I was 14. While I was at Perkins, I was on the Perkins wrestling team and the track team. Sailing was just another avenue for being competitive, which overlapped into getting a job because you have to be competitive to do that. In a few months, I will be retiring from my job as Braille Shop Instructor at Bay State Correctional Center. We produce Braille books for school kids using computer technology and inmate labor. Sometimes, sailing seems to be more of a priority than the job. It looks like what we have for you guys for today is the back side of this front that went through last night, uh, which is giving us a nice light northerly this morning, which uh, I anticipate to hold most of the day, somewhere in the six to 10 knot range. This slides in, well, I'll try again. The other thing about now that go is right back, we do oh yeah, you gotta fit it, so keep pulling. It. It there you go. Just give me numbers, it's off. Down two. This is where it gets a little challenging because it's light and you're, you're looking for pressure, counterintuitive. For me, at this point, the hard part is just maintaining mental focus, especially as the caliber of sailing goes up, the expectations go up, the margin for error becomes tighter. What's at 1 o'clock? What's at 2 o'clock? Coming down, coming down, coming down. But if you're passionate about what you do and you work hard at it, um, most eventually there, come, there comes points where everything will click. That's what makes racing so much fun, is that when it works, it's wonderful. Congratulations, and here's your trophy. Nobody wants to be blind. Nobody wants to lose vision. Nobody wants to struggle through life. And every time you go to the doctors, you go with hope that they're going to give you news that things will change. But things don't change. Okay. Go to work. Hmm. So you get yourself on a high to get there, mm -hmm. and then you leave on a low of reality. But it's those lows that give me the energy to reach into my heart to advocate for others. Which is Nana. Can you read this story? I said, Liana, Nana can't see those words either. She came back and she says, all right, read me this story, Nana. So my daughter, Lori, said, just make something up for her. And I said, all right, once upon a time, she, Liana went, oh, Nana, you're making this up. No stories start with once upon a time. <laughs> So she knew what, that I couldn't see the words. <laughs> it was the hardest thing I did was to surrender my driver's license. Do you see the V now, or is it too blurry? I can see it. Do you see it now? Yes. Even if I only went a mile from the house, it was that sense of freedom. It was that independence. It was mine. I could get away if I wanted to.
And when I take this away, do they go much further apart horizontally? They're side by side, but they're really far apart. Right. So this brought it closer, but not together. Right. Their, their edges are touching. My husband and I met when I was 16, and he met me with nystagmus. He met me with my head turned to the side my entire life. He was used to me driving that way. So I don't think, and I still don't think, even my family fully understand how difficult it is for me to see. If somebody's eyes look normal, you don't see the disability. And so many people with vision loss, their eyes do look normal. So you assume that they see normal. Okay, you're gonna see a very pretty blue light. It looks like when I lost my license, it's, they, nobody understands why. You know, like you've had that your entire life. Yes, so why can't you see now? Well, because it's changing, you know? The next step would be to consider doing some eye muscle surgery to weaken that muscle that's pulling the eye towards the nose to allow the eye to come a little bit more towards the center so you wouldn't necessarily need to have to turn your head as much to see clearer. Where's your next adventure to? Um, I don't know, the Nationals probably uh, next year and then hopefully the Worlds in Japan. So does the, the dog tell you when to tack? Yeah, he doesn't go with me. I no. wish he could. Did you sail in the, in the Charles River too? Have you ever been sailing in there? Where do you usually sail out? You know, this is terrible. I, I don't know where we're sailing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is terrible. You don't know where you go sailing? I don't you know go, where we... You're not going to national? Arthur will kill me. <laughs> we're going to go left. I, I can't figure out where we are either. I thought I knew my way around here last time. I don't get where we parked. It's like caught here. Yeah, so, so I'd keep it back, back, this, back here. Some people may have never been on a sailboat at all. You know, they're trying to figure out, well, what's that noise? Or where's yeah. this movement coming from? Uh, particularly if they might not feel stable. So there's noises that some people might never have experienced before. Yeah. Right? That we take for granted, like the halyard slapping on the mast. Yeah. You know? uh, what are they feeling? What does it feel like? Uh, Actually, I can use some help back here. It's all messed up. Already. Oh, you go the front. oh, I go this way because I'm crawling from that way. Sailing has given me another challenge that I, I embrace without worrying so much that I cannot see, I cannot do it. No, I don't want to be treated differently. Yeah, I don't want to be protected and sheltered, you know? I want to be me. That's course number two. Course number one is just is start finish. Yeah. Court to, to buoy number one. Yeah. All the way down to buoy number three. Okay. And then back over here. And then back to start finish. Yeah.
One of the training courses I had recently was about how to deal with, with major change, and I sort of felt I'd already had gone through all those steps, and that's exactly what they said. Don't view change as something you should be negative about. Don't oppose it. Really just go with the flow. So let's work out the uh, seating arrangements. Five, four, three, two, one. Everything can change so fast with just one move. It's just all about staying focused and trusting your team. The rules for a blind sailing team consist of four members, two blind sailors, and two sighted crew. Okay, focus, focus, focus. The two blind sailors one controls the helm, which steers the boat, and the other controls the sails, which power the boat. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And there's a gaggle of sheets and lines you need to control. And it's different for every boat. Out on the main, just a little bit still. So you just need to remember where everything is. The two-sided members of the team, one is a tactician. Down one, the little light spot here. Let's the blind sailors know what's around the boat, where a racing mark, when it's coming up. We're uh, two boat lengths from the mark. And the other sighted crew member sort of helps with lines, and they are also a set of eyes calling out how far a marker is or how close we are. Ready about? Ready about? Tack. The tactician doesn't steer the boat, it's actually the blind crew on the tiller steering the boat. Down two. That's the vision of blind sailing, you know, to let, let the blind sailor do, do as much as possible. Stay up, Scott. Stay up, Scott. Stay up. Up, Scott. Up. Ready to tack in three, two, one. Tacking. A lot of sailing is to the seat of the pants. Feel in your butt and you'll feel the angle of heel. Listen to the waves to leeward. If there's decent breeze, we have good boat speed because the waves are rhythmic. Listen to the sails. If they're luffing, we're either up too high or the trim is not proper. All right, cock. What we lack in vision we compensate for by the senses we have left. 11 on deck. He looks upwind, he puts his cheek up out there, he right. feels the pressure of the wind on his cheek, which allows him to really understand the dynamic of where the boat's going, how the boat should be trimmed. It is a special, special talent that they've developed. And all of this is happening while I'm listening to other boats, while I'm listening to instructions from my guides, while I'm listening to feedback from them. For lack of a better description, it's a full sensory experience. Up one, up two, stop. All right, good Woo! job. Woo! 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 Yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah. Nice. Good oh. job. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah. yeah. Woo! Oh, oh. guys all again for being here. You know, this whole thing is a new thing and we all made some new connections here. And I think that's what we really want to celebrate. Um, 
you know, whatever happens out the water, you know, we might be cursing and yelling at each other out there. <laughs> we're, when we come back in here, I think we're all a family because we were really in this community together, and we, I think we made bridges to other communities too. And um, I mean, we just started a new family. So here's to that. Right. Yeah. Right. When people ask me, you know, what's the craziest thing you've ever done? And it's like, oh, I race sailboats. You know, to that, to them. I think it's, it's really shocking. I was in my last year of college, and I underwent emergency neurosurgery to remove a, a benign tumor. Resulting from that surgery, there was some damage done to my optic nerves, which uh, left me to lose a lot of my functional vision and uh, sent me into a spiral of dis depression. And uh, I just, I thought my life would be over. I, I, I thought I'd just be spending my life in bed and, you know, just uh, stagnant and not moving on anymore. I, I thought my life would have just, you know, basically just have stopped. It's supposed to call out the streets you're on, whatever, you know, tell you your location. But uh, it doesn't always work. You know, I still keep, keep hope alive, maybe a miracle will happen, but I had to deal with the facts and start, start to go from there. You're on 100% of the time. You don't have a second chance to go through the course. Okay, so I'm going to roll my number in the middle. Five. Okay, got it. Yep. Inky roll. Inky, I'm going to hand you the dice. Yeah. And I will bring the board towards you. You can roll, roll it on the table. table. Roll it on the table. Oh, you can roll it. I mean, you know, I mean, you I got a ten of uh -oh. Yeah. That's what makes racing so much fun, is that when it works, it's wonderful. <laughs> and carryover from sport can be huge when applied to things like everyday personal life that your life is not over if you lose your vision. And even if you never had it, you know, you don't have to live it in a bubble. <laughs> I got eight. I got eight. Okay, I'm going to move you. One, two. You're going to be a railroad tycoon? He's going to try it. Here's I'm landed on Mr. Top Hat's yeah. property. Oh, Pennsylvania oh. Railroad. Oh, 25 <laughs> bucks? 25. You got to fork it over to me, big guy. That's okay. Okay, there's one here. That's fine. Mike, no, no, Mike, just fell off. It just fell off, Mike. You're losing all your money. I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. I'm blind. I can't see. Oh, 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 he can play the blind card. <laughs> he just played the blind card. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's going to pull the blind card out of the chance pile, right? <laughs> yeah. The blind oh, card doesn't work in this conception. <laughs> it's interesting when you look at the type of person who's blind or visually impaired, who decides to be a competitive sailor. We all are assertive about who, what, and how we do things, and who we are. Um, and if you're gonna step on us, we're gonna squawk. I can't even need, watch out. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I clap my hands over my ears. Okay. Hey, how much is Illinois? Let me look. Can I see? Where? Carl, it's, you can hold Carl's hand. I'm only it's four spaces hand. from the okay. start, you know. <laughs> We've noticed that about you. It's How much $240. Was it? I think you skipped me. Oh. Okay. Did you, you skip me? Okay. When you're on the water, you're competitive, but when you're off the water, you come together and you're friends and you're a team and you're on equal playing ground and you share your joys of that race and you share your pitfalls and you learn from each other. And even if we don't win, I've given it my all, I've given it my best. It's a good day because I could embrace it, I could do it. Even though you're under the direction of your sighted guide, they're your passenger and you're driving against 
the wind, but you're driving once again. You have that independence. You're making decisions. You're, communi you're communicating. You're free. It's the only freedom that you really, that I really feel that I have with that vision loss. Yeah. Screensaver. I just feel. We are surely not preparing our teams to compete at the world level, but we must even the playing field for fairness. The results of this past U.S. national show clearly that those teams put in the naval dash body sailor. Did you see the email from Al Spector? I saw it this morning. The thing is, we're concentrating, not being able to see. We're mm -hmm. concentrating on what you can feel the wind or whatever it may be. Yeah. That's why we have those people to assist us in certain things. It does not mean that we're going to give them all the control. And they all say, oh, you can't, you, your team can't sell with anybody but Ken. It goes to show that Ken does everything for you. No, no it goes to show it that is. we are tuned into Ken's instructions. Yeah, and, and, and Ken us. knows exactly my, t my one, my down two. It means yes. other people, yeah. they're going this wide. I said, I'm going, I'm zigzagging all around. I said, what? I said, what's going on here? Yeah. When we sail, Ken is... A person will give you the layout of what's happening in the water. It's not like somebody just guiding you. And in that way, we feel that we are really within the competition. Yep. So we know exactly what happened. Even tell us what the, something happened there in the other boats, it tells us. Yeah. Other people don't do that. So I feel very involved sailing with someone who knows what's happening and give you instruction. That's how I am too, Inky. Yeah. I don't want somebody telling me to let the jib way out and then, no, pull it way in. And it wastes a lot of strength. And energy. And energy to let it out and pull it in. I'd rather fine tune it. I, I look at everybody as so old. When you're racing as a blind sailor, we have to say thank you to those side of people. Mm -hmm. You have eight boats converging in the one point. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are, how best you are as a sailor. You have eight boats converging in one point to take a turn. You cannot be kidding me. Mm -hmm. These people get nervous. They get nervous. Are we hoping to go to Japan? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta practice Japanese first. <laughs> This really has been the premier event in blind sailing in the United States. And it also helps to prepare us uh, for competing on the world stage in Japan. How are right. you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. You're looking great. Oh, thank you. You want looking terrific. Sailing a lot? Uh, as much as I can. That's why sometimes I say to people, don't pay too much attention to their vision. Pay much about the feeling. Yeah. You know? So, but you, you were vision impaired from birth, were you? No, no, no. No, no. no you weren't. I, was, I lost my vision at 17 years old. Really? So I did that gradually happen? or was No. Like... As a matter of fact, I lost my vision one night. Overnight. Really? I had a little problem with my vision. I went to see a doctor. Yeah. had a surgery. Boom. I woke up the next morning. I couldn't see anything. That evening, my father came to the hospital with the president of the country. He looked at me, and um, the president's wife, he said, Oh, well, things will be okay. You'll be going to the United States. My left eye was supposed to be saved. Yeah. By the time we tried to go come here in the United States, it began to affect my left eye. From where? I, I was born in the Congo. In oh, Africa. Congo. Yeah. In most African nations, blind people sit in a corner and beg for money. That's one of the things my parents didn't want to see me do. That's why my, my father was so devastated about to, to hear about me becoming blind. And I remember when I was young in Africa, we walked by, we see a blind person sitting, you know, putting his hand like this, begging for money. We would take a beer bottle cap, uh, cup, we'd drop it in his hand. Oh, he threw it out. No, that's not money. We thought, oh, he can see. We, we, you know, I've seen people used to beat them up. 
And when I, I was really declared blind in Massachusetts, I want to kill myself. And that's one of the things I said to the lady who was helping, you know, my good friend Linda said, I'd rather, I'd rather die than be blind. You've got your hats for your crew. Get a hat and a CD. So if you want to pull one out and give one to Nancy, please do. I hope it fits your hand. <laughs> it's extra large to fit yours this year. <laughs> That's yours. Nancy, this is Dr. Koch. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Here you And Inky, this is Inky. There are three classifications that we're looking for. Uh, the first classification we call B1, that's the worst. And those are people who are, for all practical purposes, totally blind. Uh, we'll accept they can see a little bit of light, uh, but if they can see the, the hand moving, uh, that vision is too good to be a B1 sailor. I have, like, I have no oh. peripheral. Oh. I bet your left is <laughs> Yeah, I have no peripheral. The next classification are people with some sight, but not a lot. And if you think of the eye chart, think of the big E on the eye chart. If they can barely see three times the size of that big E, then they'll fall into that second category. I am a B2, yes. That was easy. <laughs> and the third category are people who can see that three times big E, that's the B3 category. If they can see the big E and then some small letters in that, they don't fit into the classifications for blind sailing. So just to give you an idea, we'll look at for the peripheral vision. So, so the normal person will be able to see off one side of the page, the other side of the page. Weird, because I have this blinder, and then I have vision way out to the side, too. So yeah. it's not as narrow as you the might next think. Morning they ask the girl, it's like there's this donut shape area of blindness in each eye. Mine? Do I get to do you again? Do I, do I have to reclassify you? I'm a B1. You're B1. I'm total. Uh, we've, we've sailed by a variety of different roles and cast gears, and uh, the, 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 the program seems to be evolving. Uh, some blind sailors are, are handling the main sheet now. Uh, some who are less experienced are handling jib sheet. There should be one sighted guy who really isn't touching anything. And then, uh, but I just wanted to, to make sure that everyone feels comfortable with the roles that they're playing. It's going to be a, a much bigger breeze today. Can't wait. I think we're going to have some good wind, have a lot of fun out there today. Yeah. The start of the race is critical because every boat wants the best position on the starting line. Usually it's a windward start, so you have to use that zigzag pattern. It's a windward, a leeward, all the way downwind, and then back up again to windward. In order to finish. Race committee here, we're going to get underway momentarily. We'll be bringing down the AP flag. Up just a little bit more. So keep, stop turning, stop turning. Tiller in the middle. Sometimes there's a bit of screaming, yelling, uh, you know, you're in my way. And there are several rules that dictate as to who has the right of way at the start. They will give you a horn at five minutes, and at four minutes, and at one minute, and at go. You want to get a running start, so you're crossing the starting line just at that proper time. If you don't get a good start, then it's plain catch up. Everyone up on the rail, up five. Oh, Jesus, it's hard. And then you round that windward mark counterclockwise and head downwind where you're letting the sail all the way out. Dead run, what's at one o'clock? Yeah, I want to try. Head down, down, down. Wrong way! Wrong way! Woo! Get 
Today's racing in the Nationals is probably the closest competitive racing I've seen in all blind sailing. The skill level of the sailors has really increased tremendously. Whoa, oh my God. As a result of that, what we saw in one of the mark roundings, one of the blind sailors fell overboard. Oh, somebody's down right there. Oh, oh watch out. Every time I'm in the boat, I don't see myself losing. I want to win. Down 10. Down 10. All the way out now. Down five. Down, down five. five. Down five. Oh, we're not going to catch first, so he's too far ahead. Get that jib out there. Get out there a little more, and it gives you the power to fight. Just like, it's probably like road rage. <laughs> About to finish. Come on back in, Nancy. Okay, we're done. We got second. What a day. I went over to the other side, to the low side, too soon, and um, I don't know, We just, I just kept going over. I started trimming in the sail, and the boat was just on its, you know, keeled up, and I just went over. And I felt a little panicked as I saw the look on his face and his mouth open and that water just going over him completely. Uh, so, Nobody but next time, anybody. would you just let us know, please? Yeah. No. Didn't even we didn't even finish last. No, we didn't, and we didn't stop because it's about the sportsmanship, not about how you place. It's about finishing. And we finished yeah. every race. We didn't care about how we were finishing. We were learning. It was, it, it was, was dis important. disappointing from the point of view. I thought we had a couple of good, really good starts, and, and we just, just didn't go our way today. One of the things we try to do is to bring in some of our elite coaches and skilled coaching sailors from around the United States. And what that does is it exposes the sailors, whether they're um, of a beginner level or whether they're elite sailors, it really helps raise the game. It's a difficult thing to visualize when the, the conditions are changing. But one thing I want to add to that, Ken, is that's what it makes a really, the, the subtle difference between a good sailor and a great sailor, when you can shift the gears in challenging conditions. Today, we worked on practicing that while we were heading out. Good. When you practice, practice like it's racing. You put the pressure on yourself so that you, when you get to the regatta, it doesn't feel like pressure, it just feels like practice. That's but the same you know, before as I had school. kids, I used to sail three, four times a week. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, so more time on the water and yeah. more racing if possible. Yeah. Okay. No more kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be back here on Sunday practicing. But then, there aren't that many people are that hardcore. So. I think in terms of sailing, I just take it a little bit farther than some. I go to greater lengths to stay on the water, to do different things on the water as a sailor, to perfect my sport, because personally it is my sport. He's an incredible swimmer. He would go across to the other side if, you know, nobody stopped him. It's part of being independent. It's part of being able to make economic choices instead of having them made for you. That is to say, being on Social Security, SSI, SSDI. I've been there. Not deep enough yet. I don't feel the wide knees because of it. It's, it's okay. Well, one more speed bump. Let's get it done. Listen to the surf. Look where the sun is. And swim out of the water. Yeah, but you're gonna walk right into people. And you go left. So once you devote that kind of time and effort, the only choice you have is to push on and, and develop your skills to the maximum extent possible.
once we get the IV in, we'll get the medicine started to kind of help okay. with the whole process. And then we'll get, uh, get you in there, okay? Right. They're cutting all four muscles in each eye. The possible outcome will be my head will be straight, and the stagnus will still be there. Um, I'm hoping I gain some vision. I could. Mm -hmm. but for me to straighten my head and use both eyes together in sync, not just one at a time. How are you? How are you? Set? He's already made a trip up onto the bed to say goodbye. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put a little mark so everyone knows that we're going to do both eyes. So I'm going to put my initials right there. Okay? Well. This is permanent. By the way. <laughs> you know I like tattoos. <laughs> Michelangelo is leaving his mark. No, okay. Just make sure I'm asleep in there. Okay. I'm going to wake All right. back up. They're going to start the IV. It's okay. That's me. We were both working in Boston at the time, and I used to see him at the Y. I'd be working out there, and uh, I would see him on the streets occasionally with his dog. And what are dogs with little chicken? Hey, you are not supposed to be sniffing. You're supposed to be over in your place. Yeah. Get down. Go to your place. I didn't think it was ever going to work, so there's a big age difference. I found out his mother's husband and she are the same age difference. Oh, you're lucky. We ju you just missed the uh, usual how did we meet thing. La, 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 la. <laughs> see. see, my, my yeah. house is one big yeah. gear locker. Yeah. It depends on the season. Oh, yes. Either skis out or sailing and swimming gear out. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, on the water for 30. Yeah, it actually comes out to 32 seasons now. And now sail, now it's gone beyond many, half my lifetime. How many boats? Oh, yeah, 31 different yeah. boat types. I think that you put that into perspective. And, um, I mean, he his, his mother has always said she raised him just like she raised the others. Um, no differently. Uh, you know, you go out there, you want to ride a bike, go out there and ride a bike. You fall and up, I did. you fall, and he did. <laughs> if you want something badly enough, you have to work hard to get it. And in order to work hard to get it, you have to try to figure out how to overcome the obstacles that are preventing you from getting it. It's just it's overwhelmed. I don't know, it's hard. It's the first time ever. So I, I couldn't see to do my hair because everything was too blurry. But I got close enough to just look. I'm anxious to know when the swelling goes down what my vision will be like then. Oh my god, I did. That's, it's all in front of me. Oh my god. I know. This is me. This is what I look like. And I'd go out, every time I came in the bathroom I'd look and I'd and then I'd go out and I'd lay on the couch and I'd cry and I'd call my kids. I lost my identity. I don't know who that woman is in the bathroom, but she doesn't look like me. <laughs> now I can stand back. I can see my shoulders. I'm like, oh my goodness, they're very tiny. <laughs> and to see my entire face and my hair, I finally figured out how to do my hair, how to put on my makeup. I don't need to be here. I'm off the commission for the blind. We don't know how long this will last. Um, I'm taking this moment and I'm embracing it. And this year I hope to be a sighted guide with all of you. <laughs> it was the first time in years on Christmas Eve that I saw the stars. So I'm thrilled so to see all of you that have helped us <coughs> along the way and to see your faces. I left my glasses on so you wouldn't realize I could see you. But it was nice to see all of you, and thank you for giving us life and being here for us. So I want to give it back. Happy to you. I really would like to thank Arthur because the selling program, as he had having his own heart for many times, we know how it is. You can organize blind people easily. <laughs> <laughs>
But you know, it is what it is, right? It gives us autonomy, it gives us self-confidence, but we have to find that, you know, through other people as well sometimes. We thank you. Thank you. When I was in a hospital, and they told me that, you know, the doctor said that, uh, Inky, uh, there's nothing much we can do for you. The doctors and uh, some of the friends, they decided that maybe since he doesn't understand that uh, he can do something, although he's blind, and they decided to send some visually impaired professional to come to talk to me. There were some lawyers who were blind. There were a teacher who was blind. And I, I think it took maybe two or three visits that when I decided, whoa, if they can do it, why couldn't I? Why shouldn't I? I love my job because it gave me a sense of accomplishment because I'm trying to help people with disability achieving their dreams, you know, of going back to school, going back to work, or whatever it may be. I am a vocational rehabilitation counselor. What involved is to bring you up to date as far as the skills are concerned, so we can prepare you to go back to work. I like people to know that I am, quote unquote, a person with disability, with a lot of interest and a lot of accomplishment. When someone loses their vision, it's a real blow. A lot of people compare it to losing a close family member or friend. When going through rehab, it's basically just sort of ex keep every day just expanding your circle of comfort. So the first couple times it would just be stepping out of the house and you know taking a walk around the block. And sailing was just another way of sort of expanding that circle of comfort. So I jumped at the chance to do it. And definitely meeting my wife, you know, she's, she's been essential. But I had to get to a point where I was ready to be in a relationship again. I was ready to be, um, to be, to be a partner again. Okay. Am I ready now? <laughs> yeah. September 1st, uh, we did uh, an American ceremony. Uh, had 140 of our close friends and family there. To me, it was a big thank you to all the people that have sort of helped me get, get to that point. You can't be in the sport of blind sailing without you know, having a good heart and you have to be really dedicated to, to this, to, to a team and to this organization. Even coming out here and, and preparing to, to teach instructors and putting together the, the, the teaching manual, it's, it's about being dedicated to it. So what, do you, so what specifically do you want the, the student to do? Just this, say put your hand over put here. Put your hand over here. Well, I'm knocking. Okay. So just to make sure you're pointing out anything that if they're leaning over, right. you know, either have their hand up, okay. you know, but as they're getting familiar. Yeah. And when you're taking somebody around, you may want to be first. Okay. You know, that's, nice. yeah. I think Alan Danette definitely put a lot more time than I'm able to put into it. But even going through writing part of the manual um, and putting it just your thoughts and how to adapt teaching sailing for someone who's blind and visually impaired and you know what 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 actually happens out in the boat um, I think that definitely takes some time and dedication to I mean I feel comfortable like this but I've been on a boat yeah so like leaning against the lifeline isn't something that would be scary just, just just ask them so it's like learning from both sides right like they dealt with like vision loss every day but they've never probably never had experience on a boat um, yeah, I think the conga line technique works, where, you know, either they're touching you, you know, I tell them, put your hands on me, and we're going to now make a move along the perimeter of this boat. So keep them really close, and I like them in contact with them. Excellent. Our sail blind team will be competing in Japan for the Blind Sailing World Championships 
and they will be joined by a team from Texas, and together we will be representing the USA as we compete in Japan against the best blind sailors in the world. So we're very optimistic that our team is going to do well. We have become a solid team. We are ready. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. The area we race today is the first western, western area. I will translate in Japanese briefly. Uh, the most important thing I have to do now is to introduce the other members of the jury. Uh, this is Katsuya Hashabi. Hashiba. Can you sign your name here? Let's tack for air. Tack when you're ready. There's a boat at about 11 o'clock. See it? The caliber in Japan is something else, uh, which is what I would have expected. When you're in a fleet of blind sailors and you're talking about feet to inches of clearance, that, to me, is having arrived at, at the top of my game. Main in six. Hold. Feeling that breeze going across your face, you have a sense of where you are, a sense of where you've been, and you know the direction you're going. It gives you a sense of control. It's like, okay, this is me, I have to do this. On the last race of the last day, we got a bullet. And that bullet was enough to break the tie between us and Japan. The Division B1 class. The third place goes to USA Massachusetts. Oh, I love your ties. <laughs> you can tell where they're from. And the American cocky no ne, just a little bit. Hi. Thank you. First of all, thank you to those particular people who uh, really made a significant contribution so that these folks could get to Japan. The other person I'd like to introduce, and that person is going to take over my role as the director and chairman of, of Sail Blind, the competitive program, and that's Nancy Judoin. I think she has the, the broadest perspective of anyone as to how the program can be more successful. She can bring the blind sailor's perspective to it 
the fact that she doesn't have the depth of sailing experience that some of the other sighted guides um, really is immaterial. Every time they get on the boat, what's important to me to bring a better understanding is for everybody to feel where everything was from the Cunningham Bank to get that whole layout of the boat before we would even sail. Looking good, Tina. Hi. 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 Going a bit too too okay. I think they're all enjoying this moment of learning and trying different things. And I like watching the experienced sailors that have been on the helm take the new role, not just the main, right. but of the jib. Right. It's very slow. Yeah. Nope, there it is, right there. I would like to see more blind sailors sailing in sighted regattas because I believe in inclusion. And I believe that's the best way to demonstrate to people we're not a segment or team to be pitied. We're a team that's looking to make things better for everyone. Sailing has taught me how not to fear things that I cannot see. That awareness is spread through our blind community sailing program. We're gonna practice until about the third week of July, rotating positions that we are, and you sailors have a lot of input on how you wanna see the program run. So I want a little feedback, what everybody, the blind sailors, feel about their roles right now. Let's start with, Tina, you go first. How is this swapping roles working for you? I, I felt like I got a lot out of both doing all the roles, but hearing the feedback and hearing the kinds of things other people were doing in all the roles, so yeah. And you do tend to appreciate the helmsman who I just thought sat back in the boat and did nothing. But. <laughs> Seeing how instructional sailing has really become something they're, they're excited about, that has been really rewarding. I, I talked to you. Yeah, calm me. I'll call you, okay? 